presenting this woman for marriage. We do. Okay. Can <laughs> receive your bride? Thank you so much. If the guests will kindly be seated. I want to express appreciation on behalf of the bride and groom to all of you for rearranging your own personal affairs and schedules so that you could be here for their wedding ceremony. And I trust that you know how much it means to the two of them for you to have done so. So, oh, wait a minute. The principal witness is not here. Phil, you're the best man. Would you please go get Layla Oxen and <laughs> go, go find her and bring her here? <laughs> no. They just, they, they let me know that they wish <laughs> that she could be here. Um, so thank you for indulging me in, in that. I appreciate it. They have been communicating with me to let me know what they'd like to have in their wedding ceremony. And uh, to set the tone for it, they've chosen this reading, which was created about 36, 37 years ago by Andrea Bigley. She gave it to me for her wedding ceremony, and I liked it because it so perfectly expresses what's taking place. when two people join together in their wedding ceremony. So I ask her for permission to offer it to other couples. It's called Today. Now, if you'd like to turn to face one another and look at one another while I read this, you're welcome to do so. You want to release your flowers? Because this is an intimate reading. And this is what the two of them are thinking and feeling right now. Today I marry the love of my life the one who was made for me, the one who completes my soul. I cherish our friendship, 
the way that we finish each other's thoughts and that unspoken connection that we have together. I feel blessed for all that we have shared and for all that we're yet to experience as partners in life. You, you are my gift for now and forever. You are my true love. I can see why you left the UK and came down to be with her. I can see that the two of you have formed a marvelous connection with each other, and that's magnificent. And so I'm going to ask you each a question. I'll begin with you, sir. Thomas, do you take this woman, whose hand you hold, to be your wife, to live together in the covenant of marriage, and will you love her, comfort, honor, and keep her in both good and in challenging times, pledging to be faithful to her? If so, you may answer, I do. I do. So I ask you, Anne-Marie, do you take this man whose hand you hold to be your husband, to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love him, comfort, honor, and keep him in the good and the challenging times, pledging to be faithful to him? If so, you may answer, I do. I do. So at this time, I would like Alex to come next to me, and I'll hold the mic for you while you read what you have. Let me clean my throat. <laughs> Together in marriage, you will bring out the best in each other. You will learn from each other and grow from your differences. You will be two individuals living your own lives together as one. Together in marriage, you will be stronger, more sensitive, more aware, more knowing and more at peace than you are individually. You will be better people. Together in marriage, your love will give understanding to all that you do because you will share your ideas, goals, and frustrations. And you always have someone to support whatever you say and do. Together in marriage, you will be able to achieve all that you want in life. Very good. Thank you, sir. I have the honor of leading each of you as you share your vows with each other. Take these words into your heart as you say them and as you listen to them, because this is what you're living in your life with each other from this point forward. We'll begin with you, sir. I, Thomas, take you, Anne-Marie. I, Thomas, take you, Anne-Marie. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In health and in sickness. In health and in sickness. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. I shall be your companion. I shall be your companion. For the rest of our days. For the rest of our days. Thank you. Just ignore the mic. I'll hold it for you. <laughs> I am Marie. Take you, Thomas. I am Marie. Take you, Thomas. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better for worse. For better for worse. For richer for poorer. For richer for poorer. In health and sickness. In health and sickness. To love and cherish. To love and cherish. I shall be your companion. I shall be your companion. For the rest of our days. For the rest of our days. Thank you. Would you hold your left hand palm up toward her? Your left hand palm down in his. There you go. We have the rings, please. I'm going to ask you to take that wedding band, place it upon the ring finger of her left hand. If you say to her, Anne Marie, with this ring. Anne Marie, with this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. It is the symbol. It is the symbol. Of my eternal love. Of my eternal love. Place that on his left ring finger. And say 
to him. Thomas with this ring. Thomas with this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. It is the symbol. It is the symbol. Of my eternal love. Of my eternal love. It seems like a simple act to place a ring on someone's hand, but has a lot of importance and significance because you've just let the whole world know that you have someone in your life, someone who's with you all the way every day, someone who in the common vernacular has your back, someone you can trust, someone you can depend upon. I'm urging you to use that ring in those situations where you're not physically together in the same space and you wish you were, because right then you need some comfort or some support. You'd like to have your love right there with you, but they're not. Just look at your ring, feel it on your hand. It'll let you know you're always together in your mind and your heart. And you can draw a lot from that. I'm inviting you to lean on the support of family members and friends who are here with you today. I like the idea that two people coming into marriage, uniting into one marriage relationship, are also uniting two families into one larger family. We'll just assume they're giving you a flyover, which is great. This is not the normal pathway, but when the wind changes it, this is where the planes go on their way in and out of the airport. So I'm urging the two of you to lean on the support of your family and friends, and all of you have the opportunity now of not just supporting the one who up until now has been a part of your family, because they're both a part of your family now. And so support the two of them in their marriage. It will mean so much to Thomas and Anne-Marie for you to do that. So I'm going to send you forth. Soon you're going to be walking down that aisle as husband and wife, as a married couple. And we want you to know that you do go forth with the best wishes of your family and your friends, not just today, but throughout your lives together. May you draw inspiration from your relationship, from the love that you share. May the deep love, the affection, the friendship be a source of joy and support to each of you. We ask you to go into the world to hold fast to your ideals as individuals and as a couple. Long years from now, may you look at one another and be able to say, with you, I have lived the life I always wanted to live. With you, I have become the person that I always longed to be. Enjoy the journey. So with that, I have the honor and the privilege to pronounce you to be husband and wife and see if you'd like to seal it with a kiss and embrace. Ladies and gentlemen, you are congratulating Mr. and Mrs. Thomas and Anne-Marie Huxley.